run in your rig. Uh, some people are still uh, behind there. Yeah, you can come and sit. There's a big empty space here. Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you very much for being here. I'm always uh, very uh, happy to see a uh, bunch of people uh, present at our, I think now, traditional online offline events every, every month. Um, it's been quite a while that we, uh, we've organized this event and uh, well, I really uh, appreciate it. Um, it's a bit special because we are an online platform and uh, well, here we are. We are not online at all, we are offline. Uh, that's what it's behind the name, online offline. Um, I don't think it's that often that you find online platforms that allow investors to really meet the uh, entrepreneurs in the flesh. That's what we, we're doing tonight. Um, so we'll have four entrepreneurs tonight, uh, and, and we'll have the opportunity to uh, listen to their pitch, but also to ask questions uh, after each pitch, but also uh, during the drink after, afterwards. Um, so please take that opportunity. Um, we're here for that. Um, now, maybe a few practicalities, um, I'm, I'm going to do the same, please um, silence your mobiles, because uh, it's quite annoying, especially for our entrepreneurs to be interrupted during a pitch. Um, like I said, four presentations, I, I'm, I'm going to do a, a quick introduction before, just to remind some of you, or maybe explain to others uh, who we are, what we, what we do. Um, Four pitches, Q and A after each pitch, each pitch, and then um, well a drink afterwards where you, you'll have the opportunity to uh, to ask other questions to us or to the uh, entrepreneurs. Um, well, introduction, yeah, maybe this also with practicalities. If you need uh, Wi-Fi, um, the uh, the Wi-Fi link or the Wi-Fi uh, ID is Quotation City. And the password is B Walkers with uh, the capital B, M, and C. Yeah. Now, um, well, first slide is uh, well, it's basically this. Uh, who 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 is who knows who was aware that we changed our name? Uh, I hope everyone, because otherwise you won't be here. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, that, that's great. Um, so uh, maybe just a quick introduction. Um, my name is Charles de Radzitsky. I'm uh, one of the co-founders and I'm uh, the uh, CEO of uh, Spreads. And, um, well, that's, that's who we are, or, or, or more specifically why we do what we, we do. And it's very important for us to, uh, uh, to show this because that's what drives us every day. So basically, um, we really believe that every investor, well, should have the opportunity and the access to investments in companies that really matter to them, that, that they choose. Uh, that's, that's why we, we offer that platform. We also believe that in the entrepreneurs um, should be supported because they are really the fuel of the economy. And um, well, we need, we need them to, um, to be able to, to work, to grow, and to shape our future. That's, that's why we are here. And uh, that's why I really hope you are here as well as investors to, to help them to, well, to, to, to play a bit around our name, to spread their wings. That's, that's why we're here. Uh, for the investors, we're also there because we believe that um, we are there to help investors to understand what, is, what investing in startups means, uh, what are the risks, um, how, how to access those investments, how to diversify their risks, um, and you see that the word diversification is for us extremely important and that's also part of the story behind our name. Um, we are there for you to spread your risk in, in your investments. Um, and so that's why you have four opportunities tonight and not just one. Um, and, and, and if there's any advice I can give to any investors, is basically you, you, you won't be lucky. You won't find the one success story. You, you better invest in a few of them to uh, spread your risk and to, to buy the right one. Um, well, we are an investment platform um, that helps entrepreneurs to raise funds and investors to invest in them. So it's, it's the connection between investors and entrepreneurs. 
we are not working on the two first pillars that you see on the left. Um, and, and well, you hear me speaking about investment platform and not crowdfunding, crowdfunding platform. Um, well, because we are here in the investment business and not in the donation or reward business. And that's a big difference with the uh, platform that you see here. Um, not that they're not doing a great job, on the contrary, they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, but that's not our business. Um, so you have platforms that help you find the right um, NGO or philanthropy that you want to support by donations. Great. Go to GoFundMe or others. Uh, you have platforms that help entrepreneurs or artists, etc., to basically uh, kick off their first product or their, their prototype. Uh, and, uh, Kickstarter is a very good example. Uh, if, if you want to pre-buy a future product, for which a company needs funds just to produce it, well, go on Kickstarter. That's, that's a great, uh, great platform. Um, if you want to help indi individuals to find, uh, I don't know, building their home, uh, their new roof on, on, on their home or whatever, you go to Zopa. That's a peer-to-peer -peer, peer lending platform. <coughs> Again, that's not what we're doing. We help companies, we help entrepreneurs, um, either by loans or by equity, meaning that you uh, get to uh, invest in their shares, shares of their, their company. That's why what, what we do, that's a very specific business, and it also involves a lot of uh, legal and other stuff when we have to uh, well, check our, our entrepreneurs coming to us. Uh, that's why we are also so, uh, so specific. Um, well, one, one important thing um, about us is that um, we didn't just create a platform and let investors invest in just any companies, like, just like that. Um, we, well, my experience with, with venture entrepreneurs goes, goes a while back, and I know that as an investor, you really don't want your entrepreneurs to focus their energy and their time on managing basically you, sending you invites to general assemblies, uh, sending you proxies, um, having a signature on a shareholders agreement, uh, and, and, and managing all the administrative uh, stuff around that. Uh, you, want them, you want them to focus on their own business. And, and you also want a platform like ours to well, handle the, the legal and administrative stuff for you and to check the legal parameters. So that's what we're doing. And, and that's why we created Spreads Finance, which is basically the vehicle through which you will invest in uh, the companies. And instead of investing in company A, you will basically invest in the compartment A of Spreads Finance. Financially, it's exactly like if you were a direct investor, direct shareholder of that company, uh, financially. Legally speaking, legally speaking, we are basically uh, acting on your behalf. So we are, legally speaking, the uh, shareholder of that company. Does it mean that you don't have any say in what ha what's happening in that company? No. If any decision in that company uh, ha has a, 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 an impact on you, and financial impact on you, let's say uh, sell the shares or do new capital increase or whatever, basically uh, you have, um, we invite you to a general assembly that we organize to see if we have to vote yes or no to that resolution in that company. And so that's also the service that you offer to the entrepreneur, that they have one person representing the hundreds of investors in, in that company. Um, well, thanks to you, we um, did a lot since, uh, since we, we started. Um, you you helped and you invested in uh, well, almost 100 campaigns, uh, which is like 70, 80, uh, I don't know exactly companies. Some companies did several campaigns. Um, I don't have the stats here, but it means that um, as, in, as investors, you really helped to create a lot of jobs as well. Um, and that's also very important, I think, for, for our company. So thank you for your support, for your trust in, in, in what we do. Um, we really believe that, uh, that, that, that it matters and that, that we have an impact, thanks to you. Um, just a, a few final words on, on, on what happens when you invest and, 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 and how we select companies. So, um, when we receive, and we receive almost 2,000 applications of entrepreneurs per year, what we do is to check those companies based on a set of objective criteria. We, we're not there to say and to tell you, well, this is the best company ever. No. Uh, finally, it's also your choice, and that's why we are an open investment platform, and when you, where you see that other investors have or have not invested. So it's your choice, 
but we pre-select. We say, okay, these companies, they comply with our standard set of criteria. Now, investing in any startup is very risky. I already told you that. Um, and there are different ways to um, manage that risk and to mitigate that risk. Um, one thing that we put in place from day one was that um, we always have a co-investor alongside the investors through the platform, which means that there is a business angel or a venture capital uh, fund that is investing directly in the company and that is basically investing at the same conditions as you are. If I want to look at it in a different way, you are investing at the same conditions as a professional investor. And if the professional investor is selling his shares at some point, well, you have the opportunity to sell your shares at the same conditions at the same time. And so that's, I think, a very good protection because he's, he's going to be very close to that investment. He's also going to be probably on the board of directors and to be able to really follow up on that company. Um, well, another way to, to mitigate your risk is to diversify. I already told you that, and that's really the best advice that I can give to you. And then the final way, I think, is, um, well, a great gift from, from government, uh, and I really, really think it, that it is a great thing. Um, the government decided uh, two years ago to set up a tax shelter or tax incentive for investors in, in, in startups. It's very simple uh, to understand. Basically, um, if you invest in a startup, um, you get to deduct, to reduce your taxes, so not your tax basis, but directly the amount you have to pay on your, on your taxes with the amount or part of the amount that you invested in the startups. Uh, I'll come back to, to the amounts. Um, so it's really a direct benefit for you as, a, as, a, as an investor. Um, well, why did they do that? Well, exactly for the same reasons as why we exist. Uh, we, they believe that uh, supporting startups is really, is really important to support our, our economy. And uh, well, how, like I said, you can as an investor, invest up to 100,000 euros per year, of which you can deduct or reduce again, 30 or 45 percent. I'll come back to the exact number. Uh, well, the, the, why, why there is a difference. Um, so you can reduce your taxes by 30 or 45 percent of what you invested in startups. Um, the, there are different ways to get to that tax shelter. Um, you can invest directly in a company. Uh, you can invest through a fund, but there are no such funds yet. So <laughs> you forget about it for the moment. Or you can invest through uh, an investment platform. And um, well, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about our own platform, uh, so I'm probably biased. But still, I really believe that through a platform, it's easier because you get a selection of companies. You can invest in more than one company. And the platform is responsible to give you every year your tax certificate, etc., etc. So I think that's that's a very convenient way to uh, to invest. Um, the difference between thirty and forty-five percent. Um, just remember that forty-five percent goes to small companies, thirty percent to bigger ones, and that ninety-nine percent of the cases companies will be micro enterprises. So forty-five percent. Why? Because one of the conditions of the tax shelter is that those companies need to be less than four years old, and that be before getting to the SME stage, well, it's more than four years in most, most of the cases. So uh, any, in any way, on the platform, you will always see uh, the mentioned tax shelter plus the 45 or 30% if 30% uh, applies. Um, well, the conditions, like I said, um, if you invest yourself, there are a lot of conditions to, to uh, um, to um, check, uh, companies need to be less than four years, but there's a lot of other conditions. Um, again, I think it's easier through a platform because we are responsible to check those conditions. Uh, so, so that's maybe the only thing I would uh, I would say. Um, maybe just a thing for for those who, who might yeah, maybe I should invest more than. 100,000 or more than what I have in taxes. So it's max 100,000 per person per year in any case. Now, in couple, it means 200,000 and 90,000 tax reduction. Um, but if you have only 30,000 euros taxes to pay, don't pay 45, or don't, don't go to 400%, 100,000, because you cannot give uh, get that money back. 
So you reduce to zero, but not to negative and be reversed by the color. Just a hint. Voila. That was the introduction. I don't want to make it uh, longer than that, but if you have any questions now, happy to, to uh, answer them. Or later, uh, if you want to give the stage to the uh, interpreters. Let's give the stage to the interpreters. So, um, four candidates, like I said. Um, five minutes per candidate. It's very short. So, uh, I'll have to be very precise in what they're going to tell. Uh, Q&A after each speech, um, and, uh, and, and again, after, in, in, during the drink as well. Um, well, they're all, they are all here because they really hope that you will believe in them and that you will invest in them. So, uh, uh, be also open-minded and uh, listen carefully to them. Um, please also bear in mind that it's very difficult to pitch. Uh, it's not only which be impressive because there is a crowd, but also five minutes is very short, so uh, um, please give them a warm welcome and, uh, and maybe we can start with a warm applause right now, just to warm a bit the temperature. <laughs> The first startup to present uh, tonight will be Jobbox, um, and um, Didier is going to present. Um, so welcome Didier. Um, I wanted to present very briefly each one of you, and for you, um, I, will, I will, I think, steal your first line because it says it all, and, and I've done your presentation. Um, if, if, if I understand correctly, you really want to be the booking.com um, of the uh, recruiting industry. That's, that's correct, no? Yeah, I told you your show, you can consider yeah. it now. That's it. Okay, welcome Didier and Jobbox. Good evening, my name is uh, Didier, uh, and I'm very excited to talk to you about Jobbox. Jobbox uh, is about recruiting, and recruiting may well be the most important pastime for companies to invest in nowadays. Where most companies have software for any part of their business, 95% of businesses in Belgium do not have software to manage their recruitment process. And this leads to poor results. Just to give you a couple of examples, 44% of received resumes are poorly underqualified. Even worse, 25% of the top qualifying candidates are lost during the recruitment process. The average time to hire well exceeds 50 days, and the average cost per hire well exceeds 10,000 euros per hire. Now that's fine if people stay for 25 years, but if they stay for one year and a half, 10,000 euros is a lot of money. So there's room for improvement. So Jobbox Recruitment uh, Technologies develops an online talent recruitment tool. It's aimed at small and medium-sized companies and recruiters that have no access to professional recruitment software. So within Jobbox, they can manage their complete recruitment process from A to Z. They can create and publish job postings the way they like and the way they see fit. They can monitor the advancement of their process, track and source sufficient qualified candidates to assure themselves of a successful hire. Professional help is only one click away with the platform, so any part of your recruitment process can be outsourced to professionals. And candidates get to enjoy the experience of a mobile app. So they can, they can choose on which jobs to apply and they can follow their own recruitment process on a mobile app. And the great thing about Jobbox is that both the tool and the mobile app are absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything for the use. Not even free like six months in the game, you get to put first bill. We've built a convenience layer over the complete recruitment industry. All we have done is add another recruitment website to the already cluttered marketplace. And we are not relying on licenses to build our business. I've tried that. 
That's very hard work, and it doesn't work. Our revenue is expected to come from commissions and fees from the resale recruitment products and services from within our platform. The margins that we can earn on single job postings are huge. The fees for brokering freelance recruit professionals vary between 15 and 30 percent. And we believe that the future of our revenue will lie in big data and artificial intelligence, helping companies find their perfect match. Jobbox wants to become the new standard for talent recruitment for all companies to use. And for that, of course, the success of this business is going to depend on how we launch it. And to order, in order to launch this successfully, we are looking for investors to help us make this dream come true. In total, we'll be looking for 150 to 250,000 euros. A 50 to 100,000 euros is hoped to be found within this investment platform. In regards to the use of funds, we're not going to invest any money in the development of our product. It's completely finished, it's completely developed and ready for market. So what do we need the money for? For the successful launch. So about 27% of our investments will go to a, a multimedia marketing campaign, radio and digital. Um, we believe in uh, customer success and customer um, service. So 33% will go to staffing. The most important staffing functions will be marketing, sales, and customer support. 20% of the investments are needed to buy product. In order to assure ourselves of these big margins on job postings, we need to buy them in bulk. And of course, the last 20% will be going to the continuous development of our tool and our product. Um, it may be finished now, but we will be developing new features as we go along to stay ahead of competition. And, of course, we will want to adapt our product to the latest trends in recruiting, because recruiting changes every day. Thank you, and I'm ready for your questions. For questions, and if, if you want, uh, French, Dutch, English, and if needed, we just translate your point. Uh, you're obviously not the <coughs> first one with this idea. Uh, so can you talk about uh, your competition and how do you plan to stand out of this uh, other players in this field? There are other players in the market that offer recruitment software. Most of them ask for a license fee. And even if the license fee may be up to 50 euros per month or 250 euros per month, depending on the number of credits you want to buy, 95% of our business today are not buying these really well-written solutions. There are also other players that go into the resale of job postings. If one click, you're posted on all the job sites. But then they don't offer the, the convenience of the, uh, of the tool that we have. We really put the convenience centrally. We want it to be the recruitment industry, or Booking.com is to the travel industry. We're not going to be part of that industry. We just want to offer convenience and be between all these companies that do not have it today and be able to use it for free. We can really get a quick market launch, market introduction, and we'll leave all these other players that try part of this business model behind this. Um, what have you done? Well, we have the luck of being married to, uh, to uh, professional HR professionals, and we've discussed with them what this would do. And I have a very good friend, Jos Bortil, who's been a uh, commercial director of the BDRB for over, well, let's say, more than enough years. And the first thing he told me is, we've been waiting for this idea for over 50 years. 
And I think that means a lot. Of course, we're only watching in the first Dach van de Arbeid, because that will get a lot of attention, we hope. But we're starting with 100 companies that can start already today in a better version to test the product. And our product is going to be fine-tuned to their responses and feedback. Because who are we to know how you would like to work with the system? We're just offering a platform and we'll have to move some buttons about and, and offer some, some things before the others. But basically the product we have today is ready and we're trying it. It's easy to use and it solves a lot of issues they have today. We haven't tried it with uh, 20,000 resumes per week. We hope we will do that very soon. Um, but um, technically, uh, we're working on the Amazon uh, service, and we've well, the, the transactions that are actually done are not so heavy. You don't have to really send complete pictures because candidates will have their profile ready. It's already in the system. Uh, Enterprises will have their vacancies ready and do automatic matching on, on a number of, of points. So we don't fear that much that the, the, the flow of information could be that heavy. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next uh, company um, tonight is uh, Nearly, and um, well, I believe they're quite ambitious because I'm doing some construction at all for the moment. And uh, to imagine that you want not only to help me and and my architect, etc., to see in 3D but also in virtual reality, I must say that um, I must say that I, I want to see it. So um, I think you will explain it, but also that you will show it afterwards as a demo. So. Uh, for everyone who wants to uh, have a look afterwards, I think you can go look. So please welcome Sarah and Gemma. Hello, I'm Gemma. I'm Good evening, everybody. So my name is uh, Jean-Marc, Jean-Marc de Cass. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, Nearly, and I'm here tonight with my team there. Thomas, Marie, Antoine, and also Epiphan in the back, looking at the computer so that it's still there in a few minutes. And what are we doing? Um, in fact, we create virtual reality experience, but we do that to redefine the real estate sector. And we already do that. This is what we have shown at uh, Batibo, and uh, I must admit that uh, the reaction of the person was just crazy. You can see that some person are taking showers, the kid is looking to his father, and really 99% of the person do like it. Today we want to go to the next step, and we are looking for a minimum of 400k to support the development. What will we do? In fact, we have already developed um, some process, some scripts, scripts sorry, in order to create virtual reality experience. But now we want to translate it into a web platform, so that more people, more customers can be um, can be uh, can use uh, this technology to improve their real estate sector uh, experiences. First of all, maybe you don't know, but it's like crazy. 16 million me uh, square meters are built every year in Belgium, taking into account new building but also renovation. It's about 18 million billions of annual revenue, but. It's very crazy to read this type of revenue. But another thing is that for the investment of 25, 30 years, do you know how they take the decision? They are looking into the map. They are just discussing. They are looking at pictures. They don't feel into the house. And so that's why we are nearly, and we want to change that. 
and we are looking to investors in order to support our development. So this is the team. It's quite a complex team, a mix of various uh, companies, chief developer, a chief 3D officer, a platform, and also two trainees already helping the company. And it's really important for the virtual reality, because even if you know 3D in general, making virtual reality is just not just making 3D in another way. It's really looking at the media in another type of experience. And that's why we need all these resources, all these competencies to create virtual reality. So for the moment, we have a cloud platform. Uh, all the companies that we have have a dedicated website. They just need to drag and drop the DWG uh, plan, so the 2D plan coming from uh, Archicad, AutoCAD, etc. And we are transforming. Of course, for the moment, there are some steps which are manual. But this is also why we want to invest in the web platform, so that the person within one to two years can be able to develop their own VR experiences. The that they get notification when the app is ready, and they pay as they use. Because if you have a house of 100 square meters, you don't want to pay 1,000, 2,000. You just need to pay for the square meter that you're building. If you want to renovate your house, you just also need to be able to pay for the exact square meters. So easy model and easy the type of delivery. But as we are, this is what we do for the moment. Let's look into the future. And let's see what we want to read in Transcendence, hoping that they are still there in five years, that in fact, we want that nearly is the VR platform making the link between professional and customers using VR so that you as a customer is able to check before the construction but also after when you want to renovate when you want to change the paintings etc etc we also want that using our partnership that we are still developing with Neurable a startup in Boston that you can use your power brain controller our further could be that you are able to move into your house in virtual reality, reality just using the brain controller. But the second step is that taking your electromagnetic uh, in, uh, tension, matching that with uh, artificial intelligence, you will be able to have also suggestion in order to see what could be your house making um, or taking into account all your interest. And of course, in five years, even more social networks, so you will be able to get feedback from your family, from your friends, from professionals in order to improve. But you will be able to see your project from A to Z. So my conclusion, why to invest in Nearly? I hope you will do, but let me give you five good reasons. First of all, it is a growing business. We are looking to make to a market of about 20 billion in a few years. Two, three, two to three years. It's a sector, the borrowing sector, the real estate of about 300 million square meter in Europe, just in Europe, in our small Europe. Thirdly, customer loving the solution. You can have all the feedback that you want. The only way to, to see is to really test. So take a few seconds after the presentation to test, you will see your brain will drive like a, a crazy brain. <laughs> and of course, we want to integrate it because what is good now we won't be enough in a one or two years. And we want to use power brain controller and intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence. And one last thing about the philosophy is really important. We are looking to do a lot with the team, but of course, we want to partner. That's why we are looking to partner with uh, HTC Vive, only uh, developing HTC, only using HP computer, only doing the uh, power brain controller with uh, Neurable, and also looking to use Amazon Cloud. And so, what we have done, we have made VR affordable and profitable. We, cannot de we can now deliver, and we have delivered to customers. We want to start innovation, so that we can open in one year the new platform and so that in a few years you are able to do all your VR 
experience by your home. Thank you. So, questions? VR is virtual reality. Huh? <laughs> so I, I had a question. So uh, I, I assume it correctly, you already have customers and revenue. Yes, indeed. So the startup started in uh, July last year. We have finished to develop the application, the procedure, etc. end of October. And we have already signed a few customers that I can uh, give you after the presentation. And we are indeed at break even for the first time this month. Can you can you elaborate a bit more about the innovation that you plan to do? Uh, yes. So first innovation is about the web platform. So because for the moment, if you want to do VR experiences, you need to do manual steps. But to create innovation, we want to spread. Uh, the technology via a web platform. And for that, we will have to develop from scratch a web platform allowing to transcribe what we have done manually into an automatic platform. The second step is the brain platform. So just to say in a few words, you can now, via the Neurable Kit, so the Boston company, move an object into virtual reality. What we want to do is to move into the house using your thought. This is a huge uh, innovation that we will do with a university because, of course, there is no researcher in our company. And that's why we need also money to finance this research. Do, do clients want to pay per square meter? So we have three fee. The first one is one euro, just in order to, to see the volume. So basically it's white, no doors, no everything. Most of the people are paying for the three euro per square meter. And in fact, it is a mix of about the building their own house, but also using our own library. Once again, using our own library um, can allow to have a very clear and great 3D uh, VR experiences. There's also the 5 euro, but there it's really when you want to have a tailor-made experiences, your own furniture, etc. I feel they all want to, want to see it before asking the, the other questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. So, our next, uh, yeah, I think this one is it. Our next uh, startup is uh, up to date. Show it. If it works. Yeah, up to date, uh, and Bart, who's going to present. And, uh, well, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not yet completely in your audience, in target audience, but in a few years with two kids, two boys who can play soccer and hockey and tennis, etc. I guess I'm going to get a lot of notifications and then I will need your help to, to handle that, no? That's about it. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to UpToDate. Okay, good evening. Uh, I am Bart, and I'm very happy to tell you more uh, about UpToDate. Um, Okay, um, I've been volunteering for many years in several uh, associations uh, as a board member, but also uh, especially as a trainer or coach. Uh, the same goes for my business partner, who is also present tonight, uh, Yuri. Um, and the last couple of years, we've been noticing something. Uh, the fact that even if a, a smartphone is an amazing and powerful device with perfect communication skills, uh, there is still a, a, a problem within the internal communication for these uh, associations. Um, and also, uh, even if the number of smartphones that are sold every year and the number of usage of a smartphone is increasing still every year, we still note, notify that there is a, a digital, an important digital, digital gap between different uh, generations. 
And the growing communication uh, problem is not only within associations, but also within organizations, schools and companies. And, if we, and that's where UpToDate wants to attribute. We want to contribute to better internal uh, communication within these, these organizations and also to better management. And if we have a look at the real problem, we see that uh, organizations currently are struggling to uh, reach their members in an efficient way. They have to use a mix of tools. They have a, a website, they use Facebook, uh, they use uh, chat groups in WhatsApp or Messenger, they have email, and they use all these tools uh, to send out the same message uh, at, at the same moment and to the same uh, number of people. And if you use all these tools, then you have to question yourself uh, who uses what, if you will reach only a part of uh, your members. Um, if you put something on in a WhatsApp group, for example, uh, everybody answers in that crisscross with most of the time with irrelevant information. Uh, so your real information gets lost in mass, and you don't have a clear overview of who received the information and who has read, read it. And also, especially as a, a coach, if you put something in the, in the WhatsApp group or in a messenger chat box, you have to answer the same questions with the same answers over and over again. Two days before the game, eh? when is the game, when, where do I have to be, how late how do I have to be there, if you answer it a few hours later, the same question is there from another, another parent or another member of your, uh, your group, and you have to give the same answer again. So it's very time consuming. For uh, most of the uh, people that are helping in an association, it's your free time, so it's very important. And it also takes a lot of uh, energy. And in the beginning, you do it all with the passion, very motivated, but after a while, you get irritated by the fact that you receive uh, uh, too many uh, messages on your, on your smartphone. And then it, it evolves to frustration, and at the end, you get demotivated, and if your, uh, the people of your uh, organization are leaving the organization, then your organization is uh, really in danger. So that's a real problem today. What do we have as a solution up to date? Well, we offer a free, no-nonsense mobile communication platform, platform for every kind of organization. It's available on PC, so web version, and also uh, on a mobile phone. We focus on one-way communication, uh, and it can be bidirectional via standardized feedback. The organizations can replicate their own structure uh, on the platform via role-based security and user groups, and that way they can send out uh, efficient and targeted messaging. They can send out uh, calendar events, news messages, photo messages, and they can even add attachments and uh, geolinks. It's a real platform, so uh, the users can follow multiple organizations within the same uh, tool, so within the same app. And there is also, we also invent, reinvented the club sponsoring. Um, so the club sponsoring, uh, instead of having the fixed billboards around the field, we now offer uh, a kind of sponsor bar on top of the app, uh, where the, the organization, so the association, can act, uh, activate their own sponsors. Uh, it offers a lot of possibilities for sponsors and for the organization, and it makes the relationship between the club and the sponsor stronger, and they now have a real story to sell to sponsors so they can attract brand new sponsors with it. And up to date, can even serve as a matchmaker between clubs and sponsors. If you look at the market, you can see that the potential in the market is huge. Uh, we will go to the market uh, with the freemium model, so a basic free and premium paid. It will be free for uh, the associations uh, vertical, and it will be paid for schools, organizations, cities, and we also offer up to date as a service to the, all the other verticals. If you look at the numbers, you can see that it's really huge. There are, for example, 100,000 associations in Belgium only, 6,000 schools, and even more uh, organi uh, professional organizations. Um, where will we get our, our revenue stream from? Well, um, for the free version, we will uh, get revenue from uh, the activation of the club sponsors. Um, and then for, uh, for uh, premium paid services, of course, it will be via a monthly fee. For professional organizations, uh, it will be around 50, 75 euros, euros a month. Uh, and uh, we have uh, strong uh, end of year targets for uh, the end of 2019, where we want to uh, activate a thousand uh, paid organizations. Uh, by the end of 2019, we'll, we'll get a revenue from uh, 900k uh, for that. And for the free version, uh, our aim is to have a market share of 5% uh, by the end of uh, 2019. 
and we aim that uh, these three or, uh, associations will activate uh, an average of three club sponsors uh, per year. We will we'll also uh, receive uh, 750k per year for that. Uh, of course, um, these numbers are very ambitious, uh, but we will not do it alone. Um, in fact, we want to create a strong, coherent eco platform and ecosystem around us as we up to date as an epicenter of the, for communication within that platform. And we are already proud to announce you that we have a, a partnership with Trooper, uh, Wifi Pri and Tomorrow Lab. And we're also uh, strongly neg negotiating with uh, the government uh, for the school's uh, vertical. So with these partnerships, we hope to reach our uh, tar targets uh, for the end of 2019. Uh, here are some milestones uh, on up to date. So we founded our company uh, in mid-2016, one year later we uh, had a, a POP ready and we had this POP tested by uh, um, several uh, associations of, an, of different kind. Uh, and then and by, at the end of uh, last year we started the roadshow with a final version, first version of the tool. Uh, and so, and that, that's what uh, 2017 gave us. This year, in the beginning, of course we focus on finding the extra funding. Um, and also, st we strongly believe in partnerships that we want to evolve. And we hope uh, that because of these partnerships uh, and funding, uh, we can uh, get, uh, make a revenue uh, for the second half of 2018. Uh, the team, of course, uh, a mobile communication platform, it's impossible to, to create that uh, with, with the two of us. Uh, and so we chose to work with uh, experienced partners uh, for the development, for example, u you. Uh, for branding and marketing, we have a quadrigy, and for our back end, we use uh, Microsoft Azure, Azure, and we are also elected with the, uh, within the Microsoft Bispark Startup Pro program. Um, and with your help, I hope, uh, with the extra external funding of 400k, uh, will be mainly used for to uh, develop the premium version for uh, the organizations, and of course, we want to expand our team with one mobile developer and also a business developer. Uh, around us, we want to also to create uh, an experience advisory report, and of course, the joint forces with uh, the external with the partnerships, uh, with Trooper and Wifi and Tomorrow Lab are very important uh, to us. Voilà, that's that's it. I hope that uh, I uh, informed you and that you are now up to date. Up to date. Is there any questions? Any questions? I'm gonna add one is more just to understand as a, as a user, the final user, um, would I have still different uh, apps for each organization, or would I have one social no. app? So within the app, you can follow multiple organizations at the same time within the same app. So if you are playing so in the team, and your daughter is going to I don't know an art uh, club, and your son is also playing soccer in another team uh, or organization, you can follow this. The communications coming from those different associations within the same app. There's a filter to filter on only one association, but you can also mix your calendar and then you can add the calendar events of the different organizations to your own smartphone agenda so that you make a, a perfect match, a mix of a, your own personal agenda with the ones, the official agendas of your uh, associations. Question: uh, How many associations do you already have so far after the launch uh, in the last year that are really using the, the, the application already for their members uh, actively? Okay, so uh, we started uh, last year in October with the roadshow. Uh, we now have uh, about 125 uh, associations, and uh, there are around 30 associations that are already fully using the app. But uh, all the other organizations are uh, in test modus, uh, which means that most of the, the associations, they start the new, uh, at the new uh, work year. And so they now created some test user groups for, for their board, and they, most of the time they, use the, they test with one team. And we expect, uh, we are sure that they will uh, compile it, that we use it uh, fully uh, from the next uh, season. So in the summer, there are, I mean, most of those organizations are uh, fully used.
Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. So, last but certainly not least, um, yeah, maybe you can just put the, uh, the next slide on so that uh, you can see the yeah, next, next. Okay, so ne next uh, company is iBeauty. Um, I welcome um, Michelle, sorry, Michelle. <laughs> welcome on the stage. Um, well, I think in a nutshell, you're working on the beauty and the hairdressers yeah. sector, and you want to, well, decrease no shows and save their, them a lot of money. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay. Well, welcome. Do you want me to help you? Well, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I brought with me a, a paper agenda, and it's just to show you that um, a lot of beauty specialists and hairdressers are, are using uh, a paper agenda to, <coughs> to manage their beauty salon. And you see when they buy it, it looks very nice, very clean, and very and after a few weeks or months, it's very uh, cluttered and chaotic, and um, they cannot have any, any uh, value out of this. So, it's a few problems working on paper, as you know. Um, these are the main problems that, that we, uh, we think we are. There is no automation, so if you have an appointment on a, on a paper agenda, it will not send reminders via email, it will not send notifications via mobile. Um, paper does not give you any insight, it does not give you patterns, no trends, no uh, graphs or tables. And the most important one is um, there is no customer experience using, using paper, of course. Okay? There is no um, interaction, there is no contact after making uh, your point. So just to give you one um, example, uh, a pretty okay beauty salon will have uh, a missed revenue of 10,000 euros per year. Um, if you send out automatic reminders via email or via mobile, you can reduce it to uh, 3,000 euros per year. And if you see our, our yearly fee of Reading the software, it's a it's an overrated thing. That's what we think at least. Uh, so let's get rid of this uh, chaos, and that's why we created uh, iBeauty, which is software to manage beauty salons and hairdressers. It's a it's a SaaS solution, so it's software as a service. We rent the service to the to the beauty salon, they don't have to buy, they don't have to install uh, software. These are our main uh, features. I will not get into this yeah, in detail. I don't think that's so important, but in general, it's to, it's to manage or to improve your beauty salon. To give you an example of the Belgian market, we have about 8,000 beauty salons and 20 to 30,000 hairdressers. We also have uh, about 60 to 70 schools, primary uh, students. And these are our uh, current customers. So we are a running company. We have about 250 big salons and schools. We have 11 schools using the software. And, and altogether, it's about 600 beauty specialists altogether using the, the software. Um, much more important for you, these are some numbers. Um, the two in the middle are the most important. Um, churn is the amount of people who cancel their subscription to our software. We are at 0.7% and in a typical SaaS business you have to be between 4 and 6 is a, a normal percentage. If you are above 6 then it gets very uh, tricky. But 0.7 is nothing let's say. Customer 300 euros to, to have it active. But if you see we are at about 7 now over 8,000 euros to have customer life. And value. So those are pretty uh, okay numbers. That's our business model. So we have a, a test version of zero euros per month, and then depending on the size of our we pay 39 or 59 euros per month. And we have a current annual revenue of uh, 400. Um, we're not alone, fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know. Um, Salonized, Resengo, and Optios are our main developers, uh, sorry, uh, competitors. And Microsoft Excel, I think for everybody, is a, is a competitor. Maybe not for me, but I don't know. Uh, but it is 
So that's where we are now. Um, but we, we see the future a little bit different, and that's why we need uh, millions, why we need investors. Um, you see here at the middle, that's where we are now. We have uh, the middle layer of the big channels. But on top of that, we have suppliers who deliver any products. And at the bottom, we have the, the end customers who go to the salon. And we would like to, um, to connect the three layers uh, over the big industry. I have a lot of examples, but I only have five minutes. So I'll give you one, one typical example of what is possible if this. Um, imagine you're um, a woman of uh, 40 years old. You have a typical, typical kind of skin, yeah, and you have uh, a few extra wishes uh, that you would like to have in a cosmetic product. So you type it in into, a, into an application. It will search through the whole article database of all cosmetic products. It will show you the brands and the products that are suitable for your needs. And it will show you also in which high beauty, uh, beauty salon they have this kind of product. And if, how far it's away from you, if it's 10 kilometers away, and if it is still open, if you, if you have. Okay, that's, that's one example we can across the full uh, track engine. Uh, I'm not doing this alone. I have Fredrik as my co-founder. Marie Laura, she does the demos, the training, uh, most of the customer service, and Zanella and Jan, they are our uh, full-time developers in the software. Um, why would you address in iBeauty? Of course, the tax shelter is a very uh, uh, good thing, but maybe some, some, um, some uh, important factors. It's, uh, we are 100% recurring revenue, so we have a very stable forecast of our revenue. Uh, we have an not always, not always, but we have an, an indirect sales model. So we have customers that they, they look for us on Google, they find us, they see our website, they register, they test the software, they, they fill in their invoice details, they get an, an invoice automatically, they pay the invoice. So we have customers that we have never seen or heard. Uh, that's the, the perfect way, of course. Um, we have a high stickiness of our software. We have measured that 96% of our customers, they log in every day. So they are really depending on the, on the tool. And um, maybe some, some other one, uh, we have no uh, major customer. So we, have, we are not depending on a very high part of our revenue uh, from one customer. So there's no risk of somebody. And we are already supported by some important people. I think Flyo, Brio, and uh, LRM. Or yeah, we are proud that we are supported by them. Let's say so. We are in, or you might be in a, in a good company. And that was my presentation. Thank you. Basically, having bad vibes for the mics. Or the battery. So, uh, any questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We um, we are now uh, talking with an American producer of uh, pigments for permanent makeup, and they would like to use our software as a white label. So they would, we would put their logo on our software. And they have uh, 76 distributors over the, the whole world, let's say. Um, and they would like to use our software to push it through their salons by the distributor they have. So we have to create an, uh, an English version. And they will do sales and marketing. And we will do the, the technical back of it. So we would like to go international using the, the network of the existing. We have some clients in Holland, some clients in uh, Luxembourg, uh, but that's it for now in, in the international uh, climate. So. But it's it's very logic step that we could go international. And, and why the, the beauty salon sector? Oh, um, <laughs> we we have um, a web development company for about fourteen years. And one of our customers, she asked us a few years ago to develop a client file online, very simple, just to keep track of what a customer 
obviously, in our salon. And um, she's still a customer now. Uh, and we just started to add features and, and uh, advantages to the system. And that's, that's how it grew, actually. So it was very, very long, one, two, or maybe 10 customers. And then in uh, October 2016, we created a separate company, uh, IT uh, BPA. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, we went up now to about 250 users. I, I, I was surprised not to see your expansion plan for the verticals, other sectors, because I, I can imagine that what you've done here can be replicated to other sectors, to the restaurants, I don't know, or to, yes. I guess there is a lot of potential. Is yes, it's the yeah. purpose that you want to, to yeah. focus, or are there real differences in these sectors? Um, there's not such big differences, but we, we uh, will stay in the beauty sector uh, because we think if you if you choose one sector, it's uh, much easier for marketing and sales, and you are uh, much faster seen as the expert in their uh, industry. Okay, so you're not fighting with all generic CRM or ERP uh, packages. That's what we like to see. Well, I think we had really four fantastic companies. Uh, my guess is uh, you're going to have a question professionally, but I hope also with the investors. Uh, so go to your laptops tonight and, and invest. Uh, not going to last for weeks. Um, I'm sure you'll have other questions than the ones you have now. Um, so let's go over to the drink, and I will. I'm sure that uh, you will come up with our ideas. Uh, thank you all again very much for attending and uh, for participating. Really nice to see you, and let's have a drink together and, uh, and, and chat more.